Hey peeps, new bit here. Um, bit of a vloggy type situation about Operation Fez Cam. I'm I think I'm pretty much going to rant at the camera here, so I might not even release this. But yeah, as you can tell, I've been away a while. As you can see from my head. <laughs> Um, I have, and I don't mind saying this because that's the whole point of our charity. Um, I've been under the crisis team for three months. Um, now discharged. I'm okay. Don't have to worry too much. But uh, yeah, I had to stick a step down, activate emergency protocol, and uh, have Nick Hardy take over everything um, while I was away. Uh, and I've just come back uh, for my first meeting in three months. And uh, it didn't go as I'd wanted. Well, it went as, it went exactly as we expected, actually. Um, but um, in this case, that's a bad thing in a way. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm in a leisure centre car park. <laughs> the kid does trampolining, so um, I have to wait in the car. So. I might, might get more of these car vlogs. I might go outside in a minute. Some nice uh, picnic benches and stuff, but there's a lot of people out there and I don't want people nosing, you know? You know how it is. Um, but yeah, we... to get, just up, get you up to speed, there are now sir, six. Six! Uh, yeah, six people working for Team Reflector. Um, all on a voluntary basis, myself included, of course. Um, so, you know, the corporate structure's there. Uh, once we get, um, you know, salary grants and things in place, then, you know, they'll be working as FTEs for us. But, uh, yeah, the, between the six of us and sort of the board of directors um, who are, you know, various people um, from various walks of life, the ones... Uh, we're not going to say their names for for legal reasons and things, but like, well, one's a one's a major business owner, you know, so they're helping us with the businessy side, and you know, one's a famous actor, and one's a, a director, one's a journalist for the BBC News, all that kind of stuff. You, see, you, you get, you know, you get the idea, and um, yeah, the the pro the project is still going, it's still happening, um, you know. Obviously, Operation Fest Cam involves us getting a building and uh, turn it into a community asset um, and obviously a movie studio for ourselves. But within that movie studio, obviously, it'll be um, people with mental health doing acting and directing and stuff like that and training people up, um, as well as carrying on our um, existing Team Reflect duties uh, in terms of you know recommending mental health diagnosed people whether it be acting or, or behind the scenes or, you know, camera operators or whatever, and sort of being that sort of hub point for people looking to hire into their own crews. And, you know, we can say, well, this person's got mental health, but they've got this skill set and they're fine. And, you know, it makes them look good that they're hiring someone, you know, who's diagnosed and things. So all that will carry on. Um, but, yeah, the problem I've got at the moment is because obviously getting a building especially one as big as that we need um it involves working with a lot of third party sort of stakeholders and um, which is fine um you know you got to do what you got to do to get the project going haven't you but yeah some of these third party guys through probably no fault of their own but they they just they're not non-profits like we are and um, you know they're in business to make money hello i like money so, you know, which is fine. We don't begrudge that. Of course we don't. As long as the money-making operation um, conforms with our belief structure and, you know, our corporate ideals, you know. But, yeah, recently it's been, and not just the ones we spoke to today, but a few of them have just been doing stuff that's pissed us off, basically. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's we're all trying to work out if uh, our expectations are too high or, you know, it could be on our side, maybe a lack of experience from in terms of, you know, developing a site, which admittedly, you know, it's new for us. Um, we are, I you know, our expertise are in filmmaking. Um, 
mines in as well as filmmaking is in medicine and I worked for a fraud team uh, investigation team for for many years which has actually been quite good skills because you can find out things about people quite easily and what they're up to in the background without them realizing and uh, <laughs> yeah we dug up some things some dirt on a few of the stakeholders uh, that we were not happy with and um, we're going to over the course of a few weeks have to address that um now it could be perfectly innocent but from our perspective it doesn't look good so uh yeah <laughs> and yeah one of those stakeholders was today and we we called them out um they had a good reason slash excuse for the stuff that we found money <laughs> but and you know if you're mental health diagnosed <sighs> there's something in my gut that's telling me there's more to it than what we know at the moment um and i'm not say and i'm not saying that that is a correct assumption um but yeah it's the thing about having severe PTSD and severe anxiety and all that kind of stuff is obviously you've got to, you've got to learn to cope with it and you do naturally become untrusting um, like on a knife edge quite quickly because you have to. It's a survival instinct. You know, your brain is telling you that everyone's out to get you. Now, obviously, the, the sane part of your brain knows that they're not, but... I don't think they're out to get us on purpose or anything like that. I just feel like they are holding stuff back. Um, whether they think it's for our own good because they don't want us to get bogged down with lots of details and so we can concentrate on doing the stuff that we need to do. It might be that, um, but I don't like working like that. I like to be informed and the board especially need to, need to be informed um, <laughs> and if they're not informed, I get it in the neck. <laughs> and yeah, Monday morning, I'm going to give our report and I'm going to get it in the neck. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, uh, frankly, it's pissed me off. You know, it's like, you know, I've, I've had three months off and I'm supposed to be coming back, volunteering part-time and, and, and avoiding stress. And, uh, you know, at all costs, otherwise I'll end up back where I was a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago. And like, you know, every, it all went well. Everyone's voted me back in and yeah, they welcome me back with open arms. And then it's like all the stakeholders and the, and the board and all their, their people that they like us to talk to and all that, like, oh, you're back, are you? And it's like, whoa, chill out. And yeah, it's, uh, I am, yeah. I am going to find it a struggle to to say no, you know, um, in terms of, no, I'm not doing that because I'm only working part time. No, I'm not doing that because it's going to affect my mental health recovery and all that. And I just want to obviously want to know what's going on through everyone, through, you know, the service users that we use to um, the the sort of tertiary partners that are going to be in the building with us that we'd lined up to you know the third party stakeholders who are going to make, help us make that happen and it's juggling all that and I, I'd, I'd love to get a um project manager on board um as an fte really just to take some of that pressure off me because i am the project manager now um effectively um i've got the experience to do that i've done it for the corporate world quite a few times but i yeah i could do with that part being taken off me to be honest uh yeah and it's it's frustrating isn't it because like we're doing this for the right reasons we're doing this to help the people in nottingham and then eventually help the people of derbyshire and help the people of south yorkshire and so on and so on and spread it out and share the love you know and and fill that gap that that years of cuts to mental health services and, and things like that have, have done you know and it frustrates me that other businesses that, that say, you know, I've got way more money than us and way more resources than us and say that they're on board and say that, uh, you know, 
you know, on paper or on their social media things, oh, we support LGBTQ+, and we support mental health, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but do you? Because you're not physically doing anything except turning your logo to a, to a gay pride thing last month. And, you know, the month before, you, you, you posted the number for Samaritans on Facebook. Well, bully for you, mate, you know? <laughs> and it's just, you know, we're trying to get that message out that there's more you c that can be done that actually makes a difference to people, not just, uh, what's the word, like frivolities, you know. Uh, it's like, obviously, I'm by a, a lot of my staff are, are LGBTQ+, you know, and um, we put our money where our mouth is, literally. We donate and help out as much as we can to people like Base 51 in Nottingham who are a children's LGBT charity. Uh, you know, we do free um, or cost only if you have to travel quite a, for, for quite a long way. Um, you know, media and, and TV ads and things like that for, for smaller grassroots charities, you know. And it's like this stuff you can do. And, you know, with the LGBT thing, just in general, on a personal level, like, I've marched in Pride since every single year, since, when was it, 1999, I think my first one was, you know, uh, both in Nottingham, uh, Manchester, and I've done a couple in London, but I don't like going down London very often, it's a bit too busy for me, but yeah, Manchester and Nottingham all the time, you know, um, and as part of the, the march, you know, you, you help out various charities and you say, oh, uh, oh, you're doing this project, are you? Okay, well, um, give us an email and we'll come around and film you doing it and then you can put it on your Instagram or whatever. And we do stuff like that, you know, as well. So it's like, there's things you can do. Yes, you've got to make money. Yes, you've got to impress your own shareholders. Money! But don't do it at the cost of a good relationship with a charity partner that you happen to be working with, like in our case, you know? Um, some of the things our third party stakeholders have been doing while I've been away, and I don't know if it's because they knew I was away, I'm not saying they go on, we spoke today, but there's somebody else we need to speak to on Monday, and it's like, I don't know if it's because they knew I was away and they thought they can get away with it, because I would call them out on it instantly, because I do get a bit cross sometimes when I see something that's you know, like injustice, you know, or I see something that harms another person, you know, I'm still under the oath, you know, do no harm or do no intentional harm, you know, so it's like, I don't know if it's that or it's just the fact that somebody offered them more money, you know, and it's just, because what you've got to do is you haven't got to think about in terms of how much short-term profit you can make. You've got to think if they can't make you millions instantly, which we can't because we're a non-profit, that would be egregious to, you know, that would stop us helping people who need the help, you know. Um, but we can offer a lot of value in terms of, not in terms of money, but in terms of we've got ridiculous resources. We've got, you know, 20 years experience in the film industry. We can do TV ads. We can do, we've got social media managers, YouTube channels for, for people who have got 12 million subscribers. And obviously that's a business in itself, you know. We've got all that. We've got access to local news broadcast, you know. We've got access to the big boys, you know, ITV, BBC, you know, all, all that lot. So it's like, that's the value, you know. And whatever CIC or charity you end up working with, that's the sort of um, mindset you've got to go into it with. Not, oh, how can I make it, how can we bleed them dry and then disappear, which is what somebody's been doing, but how can I benefit from this, you know, in, in a medium to long-term thing? So, you know, a, a, a good, good PR is not cheap. And, uh, you know, if you've got a CRC like ours, especially in the media and, and has got a lot of pull in that area, maybe think of it that way. But also think of it in terms of we've got a lot of pull in that area. So if they, if someone purposefully screws us over, we could have about five news, news trucks right outside their office within an hour. Not saying we'd ever do that, but you know, it's like just the point is be nice people. <laughs> just don't think about what's in it for you think about what's in it for your community for the people you serve whether you're a private company or CRC or whatever just change your mindset okay 
And trust me, if everyone did that, the world, I mean, it won't be brilliant overnight, but it'd be a lot nicer to live in, you know? Community over profit, my friends. That's it. Anyway, I think I've ranted enough. Whether I release this, I don't know. Some of this might be cut out. I'm going to have to, I'm going to swing this past uh, the rest of the board and everything and see what they think. In the meantime, I've got meetings with some of our service users who uh, have been helping us out and you know who you are and you are awesome and I love you. Um, and they've been, you know, I'm normally the one that checks in with them in terms of how's your mental health going? Do you need to talk? Have you had a bad day? Tell me about it, that kind of thing. They've been doing it back at me, you see? It comes around. It comes around and helps you in the, in the long term. That's what I'm trying to say. But yes, hopefully I can just... I have a problem, obviously, with my mental health is turning that part of my brain off and stop you know, going over things over and over and over again in my head. And I need to turn that off because my, uh, my in-laws are coming down to visit us as well over the weekend and I'd like to, you know, just be you know, the real me and not move it, you know, and, and just have a nice time and a nice break and then come back on Monday refreshed, ready to kick some fucking ass. But until then, I've been Moobit. it. Um, he's been Nick, but he's not on this video this time. And uh, we'll see you at the next vlog, which I'm hoping is going to be semi-regularly now. I'm just trying to wait. In, we're just waiting on some... The people who own the building saying that we can talk about it um, or at least in broad terms talk about it because we'll have a lot to talk about. We've already shot some vlogs and, and tours and stuff like that but we can't release them until you know the legal stuff's sorted out. It's a whole that's a whole nother thing that I'm gonna rant about at some point. <laughs> it's like anything that stops us helping people with our mission just fucks me off. <laughs> Until then, hopefully uh, that wasn't too ranty. Hopefully, maybe if you've got some advice, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. ta -ra. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your f***ing hands! I like to move it, move it, move it.